This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marla Diane. Forbidden Dragon. Blogspot. Dot com. Aesop's Fables The Old Hound A hound who had served his master well for years and had run down many a quarry in his time began to lose his strength and speed owing to age. One day, when out hunting, his master started a powerful wild bull and set the hound at him. The latter seized the beast by the ear, but his teeth were gone and he could not retain his hold, so the boar escaped. His master began to scold him severely, but the hound interrupted him with these words. My will is as strong as ever, master, but my body is old and feeble. You ought to remember me for what I have been, instead of abusing me for what I am. End of The Old Hound This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, go to LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Aesop's Fables The Clown and the Countryman A nobleman announced his intention of giving a public entertainment in the theatre, and offered splendid prizes to all who had any novelty to exhibit at the performance. The announcement attracted a crowd of conjurers, jugglers, and acrobats, and among the rest a clown, very popular with the crowd, who let it be known that he was going to give an entirely new turn. When the day of the performance came, the theatre was filled from top to bottom some time before the entertainment began. Several performance performers exhibited their tricks, and then the popular favourite came on empty-handed and alone. At once there came a hush of expectation, and he, letting his head fall upon his breast, imitated the squeak of a pig to such perfection that the audience insisted on his producing the animal, which, they said, he must have somewhere concealed about his person. He, however, convinced them that there was no pig there, and then the applause was deafening. Among the spectators was a countryman, who disparaged the clown's performance, and announced that he would give a much superior exhibition of the same trick on the following day. Again the theatre was filled to overflowing, and again the clown gave his imitation amidst the cheers of the crowd. The countryman, meanwhile, before going on the stage, had secreted a young porker under his smock, and when the spectators derisively bade him do better, if he could, he gave it a pinch in the ear and made it squeal loudly but they all with one voice shouted out that the clown's imitation was much more true to life. Thereupon he produced the pig from under his smock and said sarcastically, There, that shows what sort of judges you are. End of Aesop's Fables, The Clown and the Countryman This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Lark and the Farmer A lark nested in a field of corn, and was rearing her brood under cover of the ripening grain. One day, before the young were fully fledged, the farmer came to look at the crop, and finding it yellowing fast, he said, I must send round word to my neighbors to come and help me reap this field. One of the young larks overheard him, and was very much frightened, and asked her mother whether they hadn't better move house at once. There's no hurry, replied she. A man who looks to his friends for help will take his time about a thing. In a few days the farmer came by again, and saw that the grain was overripe and falling out of the ears upon the ground. "'I must put it off no longer,' he said. "'This very day I'll hire the men and set them to work at once.' The lark heard him, and said to her young, 
Come, my children, we must be off. He talks no more of his friends now, but is going to take things in hand himself. Self-help is the best help. End of The Lark and the Farmer This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables, The Lion and the Ass, Chapter 4. A lion and an ass set up as partners and went a hunting together. In course of time they came to a cave in which there was a number of wild goats. The lion took up his stand at the mouth of the cave and waited for them to come out while the ass went inside and brayed for all he was worth in order to frighten them out into the open. The lion struck them down one by one as they appeared, and when the cave was empty, the ass came out and said, Well, I scared them pretty well, didn't I? I should think you did, said the lion. Why, if I hadn't known you were an ass, I should have turned and run myself. End of The Lion and the Ass this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Aesop's Fables The Prophet A prophet sat in the marketplace and told the fortunes of all who cared to engage his services. Suddenly there came running up one who told him that his house had been broken into by thieves, and that they had made off with everything they could lay hands on. He was up in a moment, and rushed off, tearing his hair and calling down curses on the miscreants. The bystanders were much amused, and one of them said, "'Our friend professes to know what is going to happen to others, but it seems he's not clever enough to perceive what's in store for himself.' End of the Prophet. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables The Hound and the Hare. A young hound started a hare and when he caught her up, would at one moment snap at her with his teeth, as though he were about to kill her, while at another he would let go his hold and frisk about her as if he were playing with another dog. At last the hare said, I wish you would show yourself in your true colors. If you are my friend, why do you bite me? If you are my enemy, why do you play with me? He is no friend who plays double. End of The Hound and the Hare This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables, The Lion, the Mouse, and the Fox a lion was lying asleep at the mouth of his den when a mouse ran over his back and tickled him so that he woke up with a start and began looking about everywhere to see what it was that had disturbed him. A fox who was looking on thought he would have a joke at the expense of the lion, so he said, Well, this is the first time I've seen a lion afraid of a mouse. Afraid of a mouse? said the lion testily. Not I. It's his bad manners I can't stand. End of The Lion, the Mouse, and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Today's reading by Will McCoy Aesop's Fables The Trumpeter Taken Prisoner A trumpeter marched into battle in the van of the army, and put courage into his comrades 
by his warlike tunes. Being captured by the enemy, he begged for his life and said, Do not put me to death. I have killed no one. Indeed, I have no weapons, but carry with me only my trumpet here. But his captors replied, That is only the more reason why we should take your life. For though you do not fight yourself, you stir up others to do so. End of The Trumpeter Taken Prisoner This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Wolf and the Crane A wolf once got a bone stuck in his throat. So he went to a crane and begged her to put her long bill down his throat and pull it out. I'll make it worth your while, he added. The crane did as she was asked and got the bone out quite easily. The wolf thanked her warmly and was just turning away when she cried, What about that fee of mine? Well, what about it, snapped the wolf, baring his teeth as he spoke. You can go about boasting that you once put your head into a wolf's mouth and didn't get it bitten off. What more do you want? End of the Wolf and the Crane This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Eagle, the Cat, and the Wild Sow An eagle built her nest at the top of a high tree. A cat with her family occupied a hollow in the trunk halfway down, and a wild sow and her young took up their quarters at the foot. They might have got on very well as neighbors, had it not been for the evil cunning of the cat. Climbing up to the eagle's nest, she said to the eagle, "'You and I are in the greatest possible danger. That dreadful creature, the sow, who is always to be seen grubbing away at the foot of the tree, means to uproot it that she may devour your family and mine at her ease. Having thus driven the eagle almost out of her senses with terror, the cat climbed down the tree and said to the sow, I must warn you against that dreadful bird, the eagle. She is only waiting her chance to fly down and carry off one of your little pigs when you take them out to feed her brood with. She succeeded in frightening the sow as much as the eagle. Then she returned to her hole in the trunk, from which, feigning to be afraid, she never came forth by day. Only by night did she creep out unseen to procure food for her kittens. The eagle, meanwhile, was afraid to stir from her nest, and the sow dared not leave her home among the roots, so that in time both they and their families perished of hunger, and their dead bodies supplied the cat with ample food for her growing family. End of The Eagle, The Cat, and The Wild Sow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables, The Wolf and the Sheep. A wolf was worried and badly bitten by dogs and lay a long time for dead. By and by he began to revive, and, feeling very hungry, called out to a passing sheep and said, Would you kindly bring me some water from the stream close by? I can manage about meat, if only I could get something to drink. But this sheep was no fool. I can quite understand, said he, that if I brought you the water, you would have no difficulty about the meat. Good morning. End of The Wolf and the Sheep This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables The Toonie Fish and the Dolphin 
A tuny fish was chased by a dolphin and splashed through the water at a great rate, but the dolphin gradually gained upon him and was just about to seize him when the force of his flight carried the tuny onto a sandbank. In the heat of the chase, the dolphin followed him, and there they both lay out of the water, gasping for dear life. When the tuny saw that his enemy was doomed like himself, he said, I don't mind having to die now, for I see that he who is the cause of my death is about to share the same fate. End of The Tuny Fish and the Dolphin This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fables, The Three Tradesmen The citizens of a certain city were debating about the best material to use in the fortifications which were about to be erected for the greater security of the town. A carpenter got up and advised the use of wood, which he said was readily procurable and easily worked. A stonemason objected to the wood on the grounds that it was so inflammable, and recommended stones instead. Then a tanner got on his legs and said, In my opinion, there's nothing like leather. Every man for himself. End of The Three Tradesmen This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Mouse and the Bull A bull gave chase to a mouse which had bitten him in the nose, but the mouse was too quick for him and slipped into a hole in a wall. The bull charged furiously into the wall again and again until he was tired out and sank down on the ground, exhausted with his efforts. When all was quiet, the mouse started out and bit him again. Beside himself with rage, he started to his feet, but by that time the mouse was back in his hole again, and he could do nothing but bellow and fume in helpless anger. Presently he heard a shrill little voice say from inside the wall, "'You big fellows don't always have it your own way. You see, sometimes we little ones come off best.'" The Battle is not always to the strong. End of the Mouse and the Bull This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables The Hare and the Hound Number 15. A hound started a hare from her form and pursued her for some distance, but as she gradually gained upon him, he gave up the chase. A rustic who had seen the race met the hound as he was returning and taunted him with his defeat. The little one was too much for you, said he. Ah, well, said the hound, don't forget it's one thing to be running for your dinner, but quite another to be running for your life. End of the hare and the hound this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information and to find out how to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by marian brown toronto canada aesop's fables the town mouse and the country mouse chapter 16 a town mouse and a country mouse were acquaintances, and the country mouse one day invited his friend to come and see him at his home in the fields. The town mouse came, and they sat down to a dinner of barley corns and roots, the latter of which had a distinctly earthy flavor. The fare was not much to the taste of the guest, and presently he broke out with, My poor dear friend, you live here no better than the ants. Now you should just see how I fare. My larder is a regular horn of plenty. 
You must come and stay with me, and I promise you you shall live on the fat of the land. So when he returned to town he took the country mouse with him, and showed him into a larder containing flour and oatmeal and figs and honey and dates. The country mouse had never seen anything like it, and sat down to enjoy the luxuries his friend provided. But before they had well begun, the door of the larder opened and someone came in. The two mice scampered off and hid themselves in a narrow and exceedingly uncomfortable hole. Presently, when all was quiet, they ventured out again, but someone else came in, and off they scuttled again. This was too much for the visitor. Good-bye, said he, I'm off. You live in the lap of luxury, I can see, but you are surrounded by dangers. Whereas at home I can enjoy my simple dinner of roots and corn in peace. End of the Town Mouse and the Country Mouse This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables, The Lion and the Bull, Chapter 17. A lion saw a fine fat bull pasturing among a herd of cattle, and cast about for some means of getting him into his clutches. So he sent him word that he was sacrificing a sheep, and asked if he would do him the honour of dining with him. The bull accepted the invitation, but, on arriving at the lion's den, he saw a great array of saucepans and spits, but no sign of a sheep. So he turned on his heel and walked quietly away. The lion called after him in an injured tone to ask the reason, and the bull turned round and said, I have reason enough. When I saw all your preparations, it struck me at once that the victim was to be a bull, and not a sheep. The net is spread in vain in sight of the bird. End of Aesop's Fable The Lion and the Bull This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Wolf the fox and the ape a wolf charged a fox with theft which he denied and the case was brought before an ape to be tried when he had heard the evidence on both sides the ape gave judgment as follows i do not think he said that you o wolf ever lost what you claim but all the same i believe that you fox are guilty of the theft in spite of all your denials the dishonest get no credit, even if they act honestly. End of the Wolf, the Fox, and the Ape This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables the eagle and the cocks there were two cocks in the same farmyard and they fought to decide who should be master when the fight was over the beaten one went and hid himself in a dark corner while the victor flew up on to the roof of the stables and crowed lustily but an eagle espied him from high up in the sky and swooped down and carried him off forthwith the other cock came out of his corner and ruled the roost without a rival. Pride comes before a fall. End of the Eagle and the Cocks This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Escaped Jackdaw A man caught a jackdaw and tied a piece of string to one of its legs, and then gave it to his children for a pet. 
But the jackdaw didn't at all like having to live with people. So, after a while, when he seemed to have become fairly tame, and they didn't watch him so closely, he slipped away and flew back to his old haunts. Unfortunately, the string was still on his leg, and before long it got entangled in the branches of a tree, and the jackdaw couldn't get free, try as he would. He saw it was all up with him, and cried in despair, Alas, in gaining my freedom, I have lost my life. End of the Escaped Jackdaw This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Farmer and the Fox A farmer was greatly annoyed by a fox, which came prowling about his yard at night and carried off his fowls. So he set the trap for him and caught him, and in order to be revenged upon him, he tied a bunch of tow to his tail and set fire to it and let him go. As ill luck would have it, however, the fox made straight for the fields where the corn was standing ripe and ready for cutting. It quickly caught fire and was all burnt up, and the farmer lost all his harvest. Revenge is a two-edged sword. End of The Farmer and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables Venus and the Cat A cat fell in love with a handsome young man and begged the goddess Venus to change her into a woman. Venus was very gracious about it and changed her at once into a beautiful maiden, whom the young man fell in love with at first sight and shortly afterwards married. One day Venus thought she would like to see whether the cat had changed her habits as well as her form, so she let a mouse run loose in the room where they were. Forgetting everything, the young woman had no sooner seen the mouse than up she jumped and was after it like a shot at which the goddess was so disgusted that she changed her back again into a cat. End of Venus and the Cat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables the Crow and the Swan A crow was filled with envy on seeing the beautiful white plumage of a swan, and thought it was due to the water in which the swan constantly bathed and swam. So he left the neighborhood of the altars, where he got his living by picking up bits of the meat offered in sacrifice, and went and lived among the pools and streams. But though he bathed and washed his feathers many times a day, he didn't make them any whiter, and at last died of hunger in the bargain. You may change your habits, but not your nature. End of The Crow and the Swan This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Patty McCoy in Hudson, Colorado. Aesop's Fable The Stag with One Eye A stag, blind of one eye, was grazing close to the seashore, and kept his sound eye turned towards the, the land, so as to be able to perceive the approach of the hounds, while the blind eye he turned towards the sea, never suspecting that any danger would threaten him from, from that quarter. As it fell out, however, some sailors, coasting along the shore, spied him, and shot an arrow at him, by which he was mortally wounded. As he lay dying, he said to himself, Wretch that I am, I bethought me of the dangers of the land, whence none assailed me, but I feared no peril from the sea, yet 
thence has come my ruin. Misfortune often assails us from an unexpected quarter. End of The Stag with One Eye This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Leanne Taki in Sitka, Alaska. Aesop's Fables The Fly and the Draft Mule A fly sat on one of the shafts of a cart, and said to the mule who was pulling it, How slow you are! Do mend your pace, or I shall have to use my sting as a goad. The mule was not in the least disturbed. Behind me, in the cart, said he, sits my master. He holds the reins and flicks me with his whip, and him I obey. But I don't want any of your impertinence. I know when I may dawdle and when I may not. End of The Fly and the Draft Mule <laughs>